today we're going to be talking about building the bottom end on a RB26 or the engine in the older GTRs. So this engine is for our project R33 GTR. Uh, the, the car has a stock bottom end and we had just put in a big single Borg Warner turbo with a full race manifold. Car was running pretty good. Um, it was making about 440 horsepower when it started to smoke. And this is not too surprising for the stock bottom end. Um, when we took it apart, there was some damage. There's some um, signs of detonation. It has the sandblasted look at the edges of the piston, especially on the exhaust side. Uh, the rings are not stuck or the ring lands aren't broken, so it's not horrible yet, but um, you know, it's kind of on its way. Basically, uh, we're gonna rebuild the bottom end with uh, all forged stuff. We're not shooting for killer horsepower, but we wanna use the full potential of the turbo. So we're looking at maybe about 550 horsepower. Or so uh, totally reliably. In our upgrade path, the uh, next thing to do is to look at pistons. Um, the weak point of the stock motor is the um, stock cast piston. It's a hyperdetectic cast piston, uh, really good to be quiet and for long life, but it's not too good for large amounts of boost. Uh, as you can see, the stock piston isn't too bad. It has a, a lot of space for the top ring groove. Um, it's one of these reasons why these RBs are pretty decent stock, but you know, anytime you surpass, like let's say, the low 400s, uh, they become iffy. So we're replacing the cast piston with the forged JE piston. Now this JE piston is a really nice part. It's a forging and it's uh, asymmetrical. Uh, the cool thing about the asymmetrical piston is it has a lot more area on the thrust side of the piston. This is part of this piston that takes uh, the cylinder uh, thrust load. So when the piston's coming down, it pushes hard on this side. On the non-thrust side, it's a lot smaller. So what this means is the piston can be lighter um, and uh, have less area for friction. When you look at the uh, stock piston versus the JE, uh, you can see that the skirt's been cut down quite a bit. You know, it's a uh, almost a slipper skirt. So we're going to get rid of any excessive weight and friction right there. Um, in the past, uh, something like this might not have been such a good choice for long life, but um, JE has the best uh, computer-assisted design, and they've been able to optimize the cam shape, so the piston is pretty stable in the bore, even though it does have a cut-down skirt. The asymmetrical skirt also helps with the bore stability, but um, you know, it's pretty impressive. This is a pretty pared down piston compared to the stock one, but it'll still be pretty quiet and um, stable in the bore. The piston is made out of 2618 alloy. Now this is a low silicon alloy and it's known for its uh, ductility and toughness. Uh, it's just the perfect thing for a turbo piston. Um, one of the drawbacks of 2618 is that it expands and contracts more with temperature variation. Um, this means it has to run a slightly wider piston to wall clearance, which can make slapping noises and uh, rattle. However, JE, with their advanced design and skirt contour, has been able to eliminate a lot of that uh, noise and rattle, especially when cold. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with the JE pistons. A lot of 2618 pistons sound like they're in a diesel truck, but um, the JE ones tend to be super quiet, like maybe only a little bit more rattly than the stock uh, hyper -detectics. So the alloy is a lot better suited for turbo applications. Uh, some of the other cool design features are um, the piston skirts come with uh, anti-friction coating. A lot of times you have to send your pistons out to get coated, but with the JEs, they come coated straight from JE. Uh, these little notches that you see are actually where you put your micrometer to um, measure the pistons so you can set your piston to wall clearance. So you don't have to worry about the coating thickness interfering with your measurements. Other cool things is that it has some 
interior milling to uh, make the uh, piston lighter. Although since this is a for a turbo motor, you don't want to go full ham and do a lot of under crown milling. You want the uh, crown to be pretty strong and you want the top ring groove to have a lot of support. So you can see it's pretty thick here. A lot of material. The number one compression ring is down lower. Uh, so it's protected from detonation and the uh, top part of the ring land is a lot stronger because it's thicker. When you uh, talk about the piston, you always also have to talk about the piston pin. So for a turbo motor, you don't want a lightweight tapered um, tool steel pin or anything uh, super lightweight. Um, turbo motors create a lot of pressure and they don't rev quite as high. So you, what you want is a straight wall, strong steel pin. Uh, when you try to get a lightweight pin, what happens is they tend to bend uh, under all the load and the bending will cause the um, pin to spin the small end bushing out of the rod, which is not too good and can actually lead to the rod failing. So a conventional thick wall pin, straight wall is what you want. For the ring set, uh, the JE Pistons come with a pretty state-of-the-art ring package. Uh, these are really low tension rings, so um, the uh, thickness is really thin and um, there's a lot of flexibility compared to traditional rings. Low tension rings are really great. They conform to the cylinder wall so you get better sealing and they also have very little inertia so when you're at top dead center and the piston's changing direction they're a lot less likely to flutter and they keep better seal there. That's actually a pretty big deal because that's where you want your piston seal to be the best because that's where um, power is generated and stuff. So you don't want any leakage right around the top dead center area. In the past, these kind of rings wore out pretty quickly, but uh, what JE has done is the uh, number one compression ring is um, steel instead of iron and it's nitrided, so it's super hard. Um, this, this gives really good wear. Uh, the number two ring is uh, ductile iron and it's a uh, what you call a naper ring. So it has kind of like a hook on the end and the hook is uh, what gives a lot of uh, contact pressure uh, in a small area. And being iron, it, it, the little hook wears in quickly to break in fast and give good seal. The oil ring is a really thin one with really thin rails or the scrapers are really thin. So this gets the job done scraping the oil off the cylinder walls and it also um, is really low friction. When you look at the uh, piston you can see that the oil rings have a lot of drain back holes so it can get rid of the oil that's scraped off by the oil ring and um, there is also an accumulator groove between the top and bottom compression rings. Now the accumulator groove acts like a gas reservoir, uh, so as the piston's moving up and down, there's uh, a little gas to get under the second ring uh, to help move it out against the cylinder wall to maintain better seal. Um, it's a little cool feature that you find in um, newer high-performance pistons. And other than that, um, it's pretty straightforward. When I say straightforward, it still has excellent cutting edge features though, like the asymmetrical skirt, the slipper skirts, and the uh, low noise skirt contour. When, when you're also building a strong turbo bottom end, the rods are really important. Now the stock RB rod isn't too bad. I mean, it's a forging, um, it has a uh, broached uh, bolt bolt heads and pretty decently sized bolts. It's not a terrible stock rod, but it's still like after the piston, maybe the weak point of the bottom end. So to get around the inherent weaknesses of the stock rod, uh, we're using boost line connecting rods. Now these rods are specifically designed for engines that have a lot of boost and they have a few neat design features that make them different from other rods. Uh, the first thing you would notice is this uh, three-hole design. Now uh, what this does is it uh, kind of spreads the stress out like at the base of the big end 
And uh, for a turbo motor that has a lot of compressive stress due to the boost, uh, it tends to concentrate all the bending force in this area. So when you look at this compared to uh, your regular high performance rod, it, it's wider here. Now, if this was a solid hunk of metal, uh, the stress would be kind of concentrated further up the beam and it, it would tend to have a weak point and maybe break about here. But with these holes, there's like a controlled um, flex right here. So the stress is spread out over the whole bottom of the rod. So you actually have a rod that can um, hold up with many more cycles a lot better. And ultimately it's still stronger. Now the boost line rod is also made out of 4340. Now that's a uh, high nickel um, steel alloy. Nickel imparts a lot of toughness and uh, fatigue resistance. So it's tougher than like maybe 4130 or um, a high chromium steel. Um, this uh, 4340 is the ideal metal for uh, connecting rods, crankshafts, gears, anything that sees um, hammering stress and repeated stress over and over. It's one of the best metals for the job. Um, in addition to the uh, really cool design that spreads out the stress, uh, boost line rods also have really good rod bolts. Now the rod bolts are the highest stress part of the bottom end typically, and the most prone to failure. So most of the time when you see an engine that's thrown a rod, it's usually because the rod bolt's broken. Now, uh, boost line did not skip with the rod bolts. These are custom age 625 bolts. Um, they're quite a bit stronger than your typical high quality ARP 2000 bolt. So the ARP 2000 bolts found in your typical high performance rod have a tensile strength of 200,000 PSI. But the 625 custom age bolts on the boost line rod have a tensile strength of 260,000 PSI. That's a pretty big jump. And anytime you build a serious motor, uh, since the rod bolts are the weakest part, that's a good investment. Elsewhere on the rod, uh, you, have a, you have a silicon bronze uh, bushing on the small end, which is kind of typical. Um, all the radiuses are pretty gen um, generous, so you don't have uh, stress risers. And the rod is shot peen, which helps uh, stress relieve the rod and it also puts a tough compressed skin over the surface which makes it a lot harder for fatigue cracks to propagate. Um, I guess other tricks when building an RB, if you're building a older RB like off an R32, you really have to consider your oil pump because that's a real weak point of that engine. Uh, the drive flats on the crank are really narrow and there isn't much support so you tend to break the oil pump gear. Uh, that can be solved by running a R33 or later crank. There's a number of uh, heavy duty pumps on the market but uh, on the R32 they're probably not strong enough so there's also spline drive pumps and uh, this makes, um, adapts the crank to use a spline drive, kind of like what you find on the 2JZ engine. And uh, that is a pretty good fix. It doesn't hurt to do it on any of the RBs and we'll probably be doing that on this one in the future. Um, but there you have it. Uh, the RB is a pretty strong engine as long as you're being reasonable and you're not asking too much of it. And uh, best of all, it sounds really good. We'd like to thank uh, JE and Boostline for supplying parts for uh, our RB. And uh, if you like this content, go to MotoIQ.com. You know, the project's been going for quite a while and you can read all about it. Um, if you want to see more of our technical videos, be sure to subscribe and uh, follow us. Uh, there's a lot of good things coming out all the time. And if you want to follow us on social media, we have a Instagram and Facebook page. So I guess until next time, we'll see you around.